I'm Norman Ross. Motorola's asked me to sort of introduce you to your new stereo high fidelity. I guess I don't really have to tell you, stereo hi-fi is the most advanced sound equipment yet developed for home use. That's why you have it. And as you know, your Motorola stereo hi-fi has many exclusive features that make it even more advanced than others. But from now on, you're probably going to hear a lot of this. I've read about stereo, but this is the first time I've ever actually heard it. What makes it so much better than hi-fi? I love hi-fi. Well, sure, everybody loves high fidelity. And until a little while ago, nothing else gave such true reproduction of recorded sound. Just listen. <laughs> Now hear what you were missing, the full, round, room-filling sound of stereophonic high fidelity. Any electronic engineer will tell you, stereophonic sound is a mighty complicated business. But putting it very simply, it works something like this. You start by recording with two microphones. One is on the artist's right, the other is over on the left. Each mic represents one of your ears, and each mic puts what it hears on one side of the single groove on your stereo record. But when you play the record, your Motorola three-channel stereo adds an important ingredient. Here's how. Have you ever noticed how your ears sort of tune out some sounds while they focus on others? Right now, they're probably focused on this stereo so sharply you could actually hear a pin drop. But while your ears are focused here, they may be deliberately dismissing sounds on the other side of the room. Microphones are more critical. They record everything they can hear. And in some stereo equipment, it's all played back, high notes and low notes together, out of the same sets of speakers, on your left and right. Because low notes don't carry quite as easily as high notes, this sometimes leads to distortion. Some of the low notes get lost in the shuffle, and the music doesn't really come out the way it went in. Well now, this never happens with your Motorola three-channel stereophonic hi-fi, because it takes extra good care of the low notes, where other stereo systems play records through just two sound systems, Motorola puts it through three separate sound systems. One for the sounds on your left, one for sounds on your right, and one system for those low notes. When you hear all three systems together, it's just as it was when it was recorded, blended perfectly and naturally. Simple? Not very, but it certainly works. Sure does. Close your eyes for a minute, and let's see if you can tell me which side this ping-pong ball is on. Left, right, left, right, left, right. You're right. Amazing, isn't it? We've certainly come a long way in this business of making sounds, recording them, and then playing them back. Just a few generations ago, people were still sending messages by beating on a drum. Let's go back for just a few minutes and recall a few high spots in the history of sound. I have a gentleman here wearing a pith helmet, walrus mustache, and carrying a lion skin rug. Looks like he's just in from a safari. Pardon me, sir. May I ask your name? My name? 
Sir Trafalgar Whitley. Sir Trafalgar, I know that among all your other accomplishments, you're the world's greatest authority on drums. Isn't that the case? That's very much the case. Yes, you see, my family, we came from England, I suppose you can tell by the accent. And we uh, then went on to live in Africa, where, of course, the drum originated. And, of course, as you, you would look out in one direction as I would look out in that direction. You would hear that drum, you see, beating. And then you'd look uh, way over there and you'd hear the drums there perhaps drumming up some kind of little natives, you know, doing chants, things of that nature, perhaps boiling a missionary. Then uh, then there would be drums over there in the far hills, uh, and those drums would be sending off messages such as they are now, you see, with regard to the great elephant hunt. So it was that we were in the... Is the Zambezi, which is literally infested with crocodiles, Norman. And uh, suddenly, <coughs> these crocs opened up their jowls and three of our prize boys were in them. And, of course, I got several good pictures. Oh, one, two, three or four of them. <laughs> and uh, used them later as a rotary club in Munse. But, uh, and was frowned upon, but <laughs> they were quite good. Then it was that we'd finally reached the far side of the uh, river, you see, and into the heart of the Gualumu Chachau country. Uh, the, uh, what country was well, that? Well, I'd rather not repeat it. <laughs> I wasn't there long enough, really, to get the correct pronunciation. And we were in hopes of killing a, a lion, you see. And we waited there in the, in the, in the shrubbery and the brush. And suddenly... Uh, the lion came out in front of us and sort of sat down as they will do. They get tired, you know. And uh, a couple of the baby, the cubs, came over and sort of mingled around the mother. <laughs> Father was off someplace, I suppose, doing... Uh, yes. <laughs> who knows? At any rate, uh, we got some excellent pictures and all of a sudden the cubs sort of sprung out and off the road, you see, and into the another area and thicket. And about 17 elephants, great bulls, most of them, bull elephants, their heavy tusks, bore down upon the poor lioness. And the great thing about it, though, the great satisfaction was terrible, you know, after we missed out on so many pictures of the lion and the lioness and the cubs, is that we did have a magnificent rug <laughs> for our little home in Nairobi. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. That was a fascinating picture of life inside Africa. I'm very grateful to you for, for sharing it with us. Much as we take it for granted today, it took centuries and the best thinking of many wise men before we could finally control sound and send it by wire. We did it with the first telegraph. And once we'd broken the sound barrier by putting messages through wires, we were really into the age of electronic communication. The telephone followed. And the next thing people knew, Mr. Edison had recorded the human voice. Thanks to him, we can still hear Caruso. Which brings us to an interesting looking lady standing here admiring another antique, one of the first phonographs. Let's listen. Sounds pretty tinny, doesn't it? Uh, may I ask you, ma'am, what, what do you think of this phonograph? I just love it. True, it's outdated. May, may I ask what your name is? Maud Frickert, 89 years old. I'm still having a ball in life. Would you tell us a little bit about, about your background? Yes, I, I've always been interested in aviation. My brother, Lamar Jean, was quite a fanatic about aviation and the airplane, you know. Were you ever up in an airplane yourself? Oh, yes, yes. I'm the oldest living airline stewardess. Miss Frigate, I wonder if you can remember back to the very first time you began to fly, can you? Oh, yes, very easily. Me and my brother, Lamar Jean, he was one for aviation and everything, and I'll never forget one terrible, dreadful night. It was during an electrical storm. 
thunder, the lightning, the clouds gathering together, you know, and the... We was almost struck there before we got into the air. <laughs> and the clouds, you know, bumping together and... And he wired me to the silly kite and sent me up into the storm. And uh, I was lit up several times. <laughs> He was let up when he sent me up. Oh, it was terrible, pathetic. <laughs> Miss Frigate, what do you think about jet air travel? Well, I think it's here to stay. Oh, there's my... My grandson is taking off. Fantastic. Ten years old. There's a real rubber band attached to that one, isn't it? <laughs> well, there sure is. <laughs> And now, you've been in the airline business over such a long period of time. You were one of the real pioneers. Could you give us some idea on what is the greatest single advance that's been made in all that period? Very simple. The invention of the paper bag. <laughs> paper bag? Why? Well, it beats sticking your head out the window. Well, thank you, Miss Frickett. You know, as Miss Frickett said, we've certainly moved along fast. Today, recorded sound has reached the very pinnacle of fidelity. Gets pretty complicated sometimes, though. Here's a gentleman who looks like he's about to discuss modern sound. He's surrounded by giant amplifiers, speakers as big as a garage door, a huge exhibit of modern sound equipment. What do you think about this exhibit, sir? Pathetic. Pathetic. Uh, my feeling is, and uh, certainly not the uh, equipment is pathetic, nor the sound or anything uh, here, but it's it's too small an exhibit. I just opened the whole thing in Grand Canyon. <laughs> we just filled it full of sound and all kinds of jazz, and it's just wonderful. It's too small. It's too small. Rather obvious. Well, you sound as though you're from, from Texas. Could I ask what your name is? No, I'm not from Texas. I've lived all over the 50 states now, aren't there? I'm lovely. B.B. Bendelstep. What, what does the BB stand for? Big Biz. I've uh, set up my own communication. Well, I would like to know what you're doing here today, though. Well, I'm just here to buy this whole thing. It's a fantastic display, haven't you? Find... What's your connection here? What do you do? I'm just going I around... I don't believe I recognize you. Have you been with my organization long? I have so many people. Now, I'm just going around from exhibit to exhibit, interviewing some of the, the visitors who've, who've come to see us In other us words, today. you're an announcer. That's what you're trying to say. Would That's you like right. to have your own radio station, your own program? Yes, sir. All right, then just keep on mentioning Motorola. Say that quick, quickly. Motorola. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yes, you're a good enlisted man. No, I, I have a feeling I, 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 I'm boring you. Is that it? No, oh, no. You can't no, handle a tycoon. <laughs> no, I can sir. buy you. I bought my brother. I bought my sister. I bought 12 wives. I guess I could buy you. <laughs> no, sir. I, I, I just have biz, to go on. To the... What do you mean you have to go on? You can stop now. Look at this equipment. Doesn't that stop you? Doesn't that make yes, you want to turn around and look? Stop Thank... fumbling around with these silly interviews, looking at these people. I want all these people. Where are they? That Trafalgar Whitley, that yes, old sir. lady. Yes, Thank that you airline, very, that very much. That stupid man over there. You come over here. I'll buy you four dollars here. Well, no matter how much money Mr. B. B. Bindlestiff spends, he's never going to enjoy stereo hi-fi as much as you are. So we'll go away and let you start enjoying it. 